veteran graduates, and currently we have about a 10.5% recidivism rate, which is about one-sixth the state average. Total savings of almost 20,000 jail, and bed, jail and, and bed prison days have resulted in probably two and a half to three million dollars in cost savings. Our challenge, as effective as these courts have been, veterans in the majority of our communities don't get the vital services, resources, and benefits they deserve. We recognize that perhaps not every California county needs to have a full-time, full-functioning veterans court, but every veteran in every court in every county should have access to the resources that are helping veterans and their families hit the reset button. AB 1672 is a study bill that would take a close look at these unserved uh, counties. What is needed and how we best can help to get to, get to a, um, a solution. I believe this bill is important for our veterans and for our state. It takes the first steps at ensuring a more responsible criminal justice process system. I'm not only happy to serve as its sponsor, but I have committed to providing half the funds to study, the uh, fund funding resources for this study. You've heard from Mr. Thomas, a terrific young ma man who's gone to hell and back, fought for his country, fought for his disorder, fought with the law, and ultimately fought with himself. Thanks to a veteran's treatment court, those fights are now behind him, and he is well on the road to recovery. But there are many, many others like him who deserve our love and our care and our attention. AB 1672 and the expansion of Veterans Treatment Courts takes the first steps in making that dream a reality. Move Thank the you. bill. Second. Sharon Riley, on behalf of the Judicial Council, we are in support of this bill. We're working really closely with the author's office to ensure that the language encompasses everything um, that the author would like to have studied. Veterans courts are our fastest growing collaborative court, and we do believe at this time it's an opportune time for a study like this to share best, best practices amongst the courts and hopefully serve um, communities that, that aren't give, getting the service that they really need. Thank you. Pete, Pete Conaty representing veterans groups. I have the distinction of having three permissive veterans treatment court bills vetoed by two governors. <laughs> and uh, many of you voted for those bills and I thank you. And then we passed ACR 36 by Assemblywoman Tony Atkins, which basically said counties, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. The legislature thinks it's a great idea. It is a great idea. And now is the time to gather statistics because they are phenomenally successful. Thank you. Lorraine Ploss, State Legislator Chair for American Veterans. We're in support. Lorna Grease, Military Officers Association here in California. And we support this very wonderful bill. Don Harper with American Legion Department of California. We support this bill. I was on the planning team to help get Sacramento Veteran Treatment Court going, and they're very successful and helps a lot of veterans. Please vote aye on this matter. Thank you. I'm Diana Ruday, California State Guild. We're an agricultural-based organization. We have another bill in this committee uh, that helps veterans be rehabilitated. We support this bill. Jessica Denning of uh, Moms Across America. I'm West Coast Director. I'm a daughter and a wife of a veteran. And on behalf of women veterans, I am fully support, and our organization is fully in support of this bill. All right, comments from the committee? Madam Chair. Oh. oh. Go ahead, Ms. Brown. No, you go. Okay. I just have a quick question. I realize that there will be a a cost uh, uh, suggested um, if this bill goes forward to the Appropriations Committee, there will be a cost suggested. But is there an estimate on how much the study would cost? Are, is there a working number that you're using for? Uh, preliminarily, we're around $200,000. Okay. Very generous of you, sir, to offer to pay half the cost. Thank you, sir. That's outstanding. Thank you. That's all. I just wanted to say thank you very much for your testimony. 
thank you for your service to our country. And um, I am in full support, Mr. Mathis, of your bill. I think it's a wonderful bill to bring forth. Um, and San Bernardino, we, we need to have um, more courts. We, we need to have more judges. So I hope that when you study this, that you'll be able to talk about how we can provide the judges that are going to be necessary for this process. Any other comment? Oh. Thank you, Madam Chair. I've been a witness. I've been present in one of those graduations ceremonies. It's very touching, very humbling experience to, to hear their stories and how much they benefited from those services. Uh, I think when it comes to this kind of services, we shouldn't think of saving a penny. This is a great service, and this is one of the least things we can offer to our veterans returning home. Great service. Thank you all. Thank you, Assembly Member. All right, we have a, a, the bill is moved by uh, Assembly Member Brown and seconded by uh, Assembly Member Chavez. Can we have the roll call, please? The motion is do pass and refer to appropriations. Irwin? Aye. Irwin, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Ashajian? Aye. Ashajian, aye. Alejo? Brown? Aye. Brown, aye. Daly? Aye. Daly, aye. Frazier? Aye. Frazier, aye. Mathis? Aye. Mathis, aye. Solace? Solace, aye. Eight zero. Right, we are going to have Assembly Member Grove up next with uh, AB twenty five twelve. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I'm proud to present AB 2512, which um, seeks to access the needs for women's veterans in California via uh, creation of a task force on California women veterans' health. A task force will be coordinated by the California Department of Veterans Affairs, CalVet. Each branch of the military has opened combat positions to women. Uh, many women have already long served in combat <coughs> zones. There are approximately 2.3 million women veterans in the United States, or 10 percent of the total number of veterans. This is expected to rise um, to 18 percent by 2040. Women veterans face unique challenges when transitioning from active duty to civilian life, and these needs can be overlooked when providing services to a very large veterans population uh, that California has. It's important that the state seek to ensure the availability of specialized services for physical and mental health, especially post-traumatic tr stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, military sexual trauma, alcohol abuse, and substance abuse. It's important that these services are tailored to the specific needs of women because California has more women vets than any other state. I've worked to ensure the task force will have minimal cost to the state. Specifically, this bill would require the task force to submit a report of its findings and recommendations to the governor and the legislature and will require the task force to consult with U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs and California Department of Public Health and Managed Care and the county veterans service officers. This task force will have a five-year sunset. <clears throat> As the first military veteran, to, female veteran to serve on the state assembly floor, I wish we would just access care and make sure that these women don't fall through the cracks. A lot of people spend a lot of time um, focusing on men veterans, which is, it, it's not a bad thing. I'm not, I'm not negating that one bit. Um, but women suffer from the same issues that men do, especially as they serve in combat zones. And, um, but I know how slow this legislative body moves. I know you have to have a task force that has findings, that makes recommendations. Recommendations creates legislation, legislation passes, and eventually um, it I'm glad the process is starting with this bill if you pass this bill. I'm sad that it's going to take another three years and many military women will fall through the cracks uh, because of the process in this, in this body. So um, here with me to testify is Pete Conady, the sponsor of the bill uh, <clears throat> from AMVETS. Move the bill. Pete? Pete. Oh, you want me to say? I'm Lorna Grease, Military Officers Association, and I am a... Vietnam veteran com uh, nurse in a mass from a mass unit. Um, you all know when we came home, nobody asked us about anything. We didn't talk. And most of the time we still don't. Women don't. Um, 
from the numbers I've seen from CalVet, about 7,000 women served in Vietnam. And about over, probably over 200,000 now are coming out of the Middle East. And they don't talk either. Um, they have problems my generation didn't even recognize could exist. And they, they just, they need help. They need to be studied first to see what the problems are because they're well different from men. So I, I this, this, uh, my association supports this bill. It's been long needed and will be very helpful in figuring out how to serve these women. Lorraine Ploss, American Veterans, Department of California State Legislative Chair. We're in support of this bill. And I have to tell you that during my tenure, which was 11 years, we did not have the services that we needed at all. So I elected to go out and pay for my care somewhere else because they were so poor or non-existent. So we support this. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete Conaty representing the other veterans groups. And I really want to thank Assemblywoman Grove for carrying this bill. Uh, she's has served in the military and she understands the need for this bill. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in support? Yes, uh, Don Harper with American Legion Department of California. We strongly, strongly support this bill. Thank you. I'm Jessica Denning, Moms Across America, and Sacramento Community Grange. We strongly support this bill. Thank you. And do we have uh, comments or questions from the committee? All right. The bill was moved by Ms. Brown and seconded by Mr. Solis. Can we have the roll call, please? Motion is do pass and refer to appropriations. Irwin? Aye. Irwin, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Ashajian? Aye. Ashajian, aye. Alejo? Brown? Aye. Brown, aye. Daly? Aye. Daly, aye. Frazier? Mathis? Solace? Aye. Solace, aye. 6-0. Uh, the, the vote is 6 0, so bills through. And we are going to open the uh, roll call for AB uh, 2247. That was Mr. Williams' bill. Thank you very Thank you. much. Uh, are we done with the rest of the bills? No, we have two more. Right. No. There's two more. An Irwin and a Chavez. Now, th this is this bill has to get to the clerk's office, so we just need how many more oh, votes? On? Yeah, Two more votes. Um, the motion is do pass and refer to accountability and administrative review. Irwin. Aye. Irwin. Aye. Solace. Two two four seven. Solace. Aye. Okay, our next bill will be AB 2085, Assembly Member Irwin, Military and Veterans Legal Aid. Right. And yours also has a support, support. Please right. continue. Thank you, Chair Chavez. Good afternoon. AB 2085 would create the Office of Military Legal Assistance without, within the California Military Department to facilitate connecting our active duty, guard, and reserve service members to low cost, to low or no cost legal representation. I received a late letter of support from the Department of Defense, which explains why I brought this bill. In its letter, the DOD states, one of our priority issues this year is working with states to facilitate service members seeking assistance in obtaining affordable legal representation. AB 2085 will facilitate that process by creating the Office of Military Legal Assistance. It is a common misconception that service members have unfettered access to legal services as a result of their military service. The Judge Advocate General Corps Attorneys in the Military, or JAG, cannot represent service members in a majority of civil matters. Because private attorneys sometimes cost more than a service member can afford, military families that need help are put in a stressful situation while facing challenging military duties. 
The program being considered in this bill would provide the opportunity for service members to obtain legal representation at a reduced or pro bono rate. We've been working with various stakeholders and we have clarified the language in the bill in response to feedback, but I wanted to briefly say the essence of the bill's concept is connecting service members who cannot afford legal representation with the existing pro bono and low cost legal assistance community. We are not creating a new group of attorneys, nor are we supplanting or competing with the fine efforts of the legal aid community. Our intent is to support both service members and the legal aid community by efficiency, efficiently connecting them. Thank you, and I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. The editor uh, to speak in support of the bill. Move the bill. I move by Mrs. Brown, second by Mr. Salas. Members in support. Mr. Chairman, members, Pete Conaty representing the veterans groups. Uh, this is a very important bill because what it does, it, it's like it establishes in law what we want to do when there is money available. In other words, it says if there is, uh, establishes within the military department when there is an appropriation by the legislature. So. We can establish this, but then we have to work on appropriations sometimes later, five years, ten years. Thank you. Lorna Grease, Military Officers Association. We support this bill. Thank you, ma'am. Don Harper of the American Legion, Department of California. We support this bill. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Lorraine Plaus, American Veterans. We support this bill. Thank you, Lorraine. Diana Rude, California State Guild. We support this bill. Thank you. Jessica Denning, on behalf of our veteran families, Moms Across America, and California, uh, I'm sorry, Sacramento Community Grange, we fully support this bill. Thank you. Back to the dais. Any questions? Uh, please call the roll. Would you like to close? I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Very good. Uh, please call the roll. Motion is due pass and refer to appropriations. Irwin? Aye. Erwin, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Ashajian? Aye. Ashajian, aye. Alejo? Brown? Aye. Brown, aye. Daly? Aye. Daly, aye. Frazier? Mathis? Solace? Aye. Solace, aye. Well, I believe I'm up next. All right, we have Assemblymember Chavez with uh, AB 1936. In the, 19 in the 1920s, at the end of the World War I, dealing with PTSD and, on and unemployed veterans, the state of California saw the wisdom of making the farm and home loan program, the farm and home loan program, which still is alive today, allowing veterans resources to either go into farming or into buying a house. Sadly, over the past few years, it's been mainly as a house, very few in the farms. However, in 2014, the federal farm bill contained the nation's first United States Department of Agriculture military veterans agriculture liaison to coordinate leadership to offer resources and support for military veterans to attain skills and resources needed to start and manage a farm. This speaks to me in a great deal. It was just last week when I was out at the Singh Ranch where I met a number of veterans actually working there, never been farmers before, but we're working with the Singh family. It's been there for decades growing tomatoes in North County, San Diego. AB 2574 will require the California Labor and Workforce Development Agency in cooperation with CDVA and other relevant state agencies in consultation with the U.S. Department of Agriculture to develop and implement a new veteran farm and ranch outreach and assistance plan to disseminate electronically throughout California America's job centers. This is a great opportunity to move veterans into the agricultural area. I would strongly request your support. And I have two supporters for this. Thank you. I'm Diana Ruday, the California State Guild. 
we're pleased to sponsor this bill, and we applaud Assemblyman Chavez for recognizing uh, the uh, points that USDA is making about America having uh, an average age of farmers at 58 years, and a third of them are 65 or older. And uh, USDA has identified veterans populations as a potential new labor, uh, not both to become a farmer and a rancher, uh, and has offered opportunities at the federal level to al allow that to happen. And this bill intends to help to leverage that those funds so they come into California. We have two million veterans here. We're the largest agricultural state, and uh, we hope to have your support for this bill. Yeah. My name is Ross Wilson. Uh, I uh, am a local boy. I'm Eagle Scout from Troop One here. My father was an Eagle Scout as well and a veteran of World War II. I was a, a first lieutenant with the 101st Airborne Division during the Tet Offensive in 1968. I'm 100% disabled as a result of my war wounds. Uh, I have my own farm. I've never been able to get any help from the government. Um, but um, my family's been farming in this valley since the early 1830s, so we have a little bit of a head start on a few of uh, the learning curves. And I'm really not sure what I'm doing here other than telling you that uh, farming's a good thing. I have a great farm between Elk Grove and Wilton. I have about <clears throat> a thousand rabbits and poultry running from turkeys to guinea hens to bannies and all the standard breeds. Um, I uh, took 24 blue ribbons at the state fair the last time I showed my birds. Um, and um, I am uh, uh, a seven day a week uh, worker. I work with my farm seven days a week. I also raise survival seeds and I work as much as I can with my fellow veterans. Uh, and if you can help them get into the farming business, uh, I think you'd be doing a real service to our veterans, uh, particularly the veterans who have uh, returned from uh, combat with serious uh, mental disorders. Uh, uh, we don't have time for mental disorders when we're taking care of our animals uh, and taking care of our seeds and doing our farming. There's just no, no time uh, for that type of stuff. Uh, so. Uh, it's a good place for a person who has been messed up by combat, and uh, I think that my fellow veterans, uh, men and women, uh, uh, can find peace of mind uh, in uh, farming where they may not be able to find peace of mind in, in other industries. And I uh, thank you for the support on this bill. Thank you. Thank you. And other witnesses in support? Uh, Colonel Lorna Grease, Military Officers Association. When I read this bill, I thought, how exciting. What's, what's more therapeutic than digging in the dirt? I do that sometimes when I go home after a bad day. And I thought, even better to make it a career for uh, a veteran. So we support this bill. Mm -hmm. Don Harper, American Legion, Department of California. Farming is good for veterans, and veterans are good for farming. Uh, for farming, please uh, say aye on this bill. Thank you. Jessica Denning, Moms Across America, Sacramento Community Grange. Uh, my husband and I had a Calvet loans. That's how we got our home. Lieutenant Bobby Ross has to rent his land because he's never been able to get a loan for his farm. He deserves it. And um, I ask you to say vote yes on this bill. Aye. Lorraine Ploss, American Veterans, we support this. Pete Conaty representing the other veterans. We always support Colonel Chavez's bills, but the, uh, the uh, sponsors came to us early. And if I had known the 101st Airborne Division was involved, I would have supported it even more. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, uh, witnesses in opposition, uh, comments or questions from the committee? Ms. Brown? Um, you just made me understand my own family. My grandfather was in World War I. When he came home, he was a farmer. When he came home, that's what he did, and he farmed acres and acres and acres of land. 
thank you because now I've made the connection for me that was priceless. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Mr. Mathis? Yes. I'd like to thank the author for bringing this forward and I'd like to ask to uh, be added on as a co-author. Sure. Um, and is it sir or is it sergeant? I'd just like to thank you for being here and sharing your personal experience. Lieutenant Bobby Ross. Lieutenant sure. Bobby Ross. <laughs> thank you. All right, we have a motion by uh, Assembly Member Mathis and a second by Assembly Member Daly. Can we? Uh, that's yes, please do. All of you, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can I please have the clerk do the roll call? The motion is do pass and refer to appropriations. Irwin? Aye. Irwin, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Ashajian? Aye. Ashajian, aye. Alejo? Brown? Aye. Brown, aye. Daly? Aye. Daly, aye. Frazier? Mathis? Aye. Mathis, aye. Solace? Aye. Solace, aye. 7 0. And so the motion is uh, do pass to appropriations. Yes. All right, and our last bill is a AB, uh, AB 1596, Mr. Mathis. 